they talking about? Welcome to What They Talking About podcast. <laughs> All right, Jalen. <laughs> it's me, it's Matt. Cozy okay. Cartier, double C and I'm double cup. Uh-huh. I got over here, my boy Laz. I got my boy Jern. It's good, gang. <laughs> As you can see, we have a guest with us today. The big one. What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome. Before we begin. <laughs> you didn't give her proper oh, introduction. No, nah, Amy. Sorry. No, nah, I mean, I was going to say her name. That's what I was saying. Like, This is the oh. Amy Villarini. Yeah. The Amy v. Villarini. Do y'all know her? Do y'all know her? Episode V. Yeah. The Amy Villarini. That's what I'm saying. What's going on, man? Before we begin, I just want to put on on notice. You are our first. Oh God. Okay, where is this going? I think I already know where it's going. <laughs> you know exactly where I'm going. You are our first guest from the mountain of Caucasus. I figured you were going there. Yes. Um I feel very welcome. <laughs> but you know your gang. Yeah. Yeah, you're gang. You're part of the gang. How do you feel, huh? You know, I feel just as good as I do every day. Yeah? Yeah. Who are you? I'm because Amy. we know who you are. I'm Amy Fit. <laughs> we know who you Talk are. Talk about it. But like, who are <laughs> you? Talk about it. Yeah, I'm Amy. I am a personal trainer. Um, what else is there important to know about me? I mean, I think of, when I think of you and yourself, um, looking from the outside, and of course, I've known you since before the uh instagram popularity that you've managed to to garner but um when i think of you now again i think of you like i guess as an instagram personality if you will um an instagram personality i mean in some way shape or form mm -hmm. um i guess you can say what's, what's the word that i'm looking for uh influencer if okay. you will okay because i do Contact i do believe creative. that i do believe that uh you do influence people to live a healthier lifestyle obviously as that is your entire brand um and yeah man but like i feel like so hearing like influencer like i would definitely would say like my take on that is like just my like my content happens to catch the eye of people like i don't really like go out of my way to try to be an influencer so, like, if you're influenced by my stuff and, like, people like it, then that's just by the natural gravitation towards what's going on. How does that feel? Like, what? because, again, I watched it and I sh kind of shared it with you guys as well. This was, like, November. I remember it was November 2020. I was on vacation. That's why I remember it so well. Mm -hmm. And I was just watching your following grow, like, literally overnight. You know, I yeah. remember when you started your, you know, that once again, every, well, not once again, but everybody followed her on Instagram at Amy Fit. But I remember when you start when you started that Instagram page, and you know, you only had like a couple hundred people, couple hundred people mm -hmm. following. I think you posted something from uh, Vernon Griffith, and he reposted. I think was, I think you tagged him, and he reposted or something yeah. like that. And the next thing you know, like followers just start raining mm -hmm. in, and then you know, there are companies hitting you up now and you're getting paid from them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you gained some clients from this. How did that feel? How, like, how does, how does it feel overall? To have, like you have over 80,000 followers. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Um, Natural. Like this wasn't bought either. This is just, yeah, they just started following her because it's like hard to condense it into one feeling because like, it's been what like two years since I've like started this. So like when it start, I would say if I'm gonna speak on when it started, I remember I was like really sh like shook by it because I was like starting to think, wow, like I think the first number that hit me was ten thousand. I was like ten thousand people have seen me. Like yeah. the concept of ten thousand people like seeing my face and seeing my body like literally move. I was like, it was just a different perspective on like social media for me. And then as it just kept going, and like it kept growing, I was like obviously like you it's it's nice to be affirmed like it's nice to be like reaffirmed from like the thing that you do and have people continuously like support you mm -hmm. um but then as i kept going through it like obviously everything has its ups and downs so like the ups were great but then it was like almost i don't know i don't want to say the word embarrassing but it was almost like yeah like almost embarrassing to see yourself get upset when the downs happen because like you're seriously going to be upset by like instagram followers going away <laughs> So, yeah. and that was real. Like, I was like, what? Like, that is not something I ever thought I would care about. Like, that was never a thing in my mind. But you become, like, so kind of, like, moved by this process of going from, like, literally zero to wherever you go. Yeah. 
And then like I mean you went from zero to a hundred real quick. Facts. Get out. Um, (laughs) 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 Um, no, but in all seriousness, this guy stinks. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but you brought up something um in regards to your emotions to losing following followers mm. um at a certain point in time and it's, it's only a couple of thousand like but these are these emotions are real when you yeah. like because obviously as you're seeing a ton of likes and people uh engaging with your content endorphins are releasing yeah. and you're feeling good um but i wanted to kind of open this question up to everybody and say like how do you guys feel in regards to uh, social media and how it plays on your mental health on a day-to-day or does it play does it does it come into play at all for you guys am i speaking on or i mean you know <laughs> i'll let we'll, we'll let amy, we'll let amy go first um i think that like obviously like like i said my perspective has shifted since i've like opened up this page mm-hmm. um but since i've started and like since this has all been like a thing for me um Can you put a mic a little closer to you yeah um i realized that like it had a bigger effect like i said than i had expected and that made me like have a lot of like self-reflection because i don't want to be somebody who like gets upset about my followers on instagram i feel like that's stupid like that doesn't make any sense it's a real thing though in in my opinion yeah but like still like i you know like i don't really identify myself just as somebody from social media so like for me to then like my identity kind of being shifted because of like followers changing i was like that's not that doesn't really speak on like who i am as like a person and so um i had to do like a lot of self-reflection during that time because it was like probably like a year that i was just like i don't know like not really growing anymore because i went from literally like i remember 300 was one number that i had and i was just consistent like you just got to post every day it doesn't matter what it is just post like whatever and then all of a sudden it was like oh now i'm gaining like three thousand followers a day and like 10 and then i was like 10 20 like 30 40 and like it kept growing up Um, and I like realized that that was something that like, I started to like more than I knew that I would. Mm -hmm. And so when it started to go away or like when it started to like coast, it was like instantly that thing, like kind of like that dopamine, I guess you could say like stopped. And so then I had to do a lot of self-reflection. I'm like, why am I actually like doing this kind of thing? Like, I'm sure other people who do social media have similar, um, effects by it, but I had to like sit and be like, what am I actually like kind of doing this for? The original purpose of me doing this wasn't to gain any sort of fame in what any way, shape or form. It was just to like, I have knowledge and I want to share it with people and I want to be known for my knowledge, not for anything else. Like that was one of my biggest things, especially with social media being so centered around like how you look and stuff like that. I wanted to make sure that my self, if I was to be known by anything, it was about to be by my knowledge. And so, um, like I said, I had to do some self-reflection and realize, like, did that perspective shift? Like, did that, like, did my mind shift in what I was gaining from doing the social media thing? And I kind of realized that there was, like, parts of me that, like, I was, my ego was being fed by, like, following Mm -hmm. and, like, support. And so I didn't really want that anymore. And so I, it was honestly good that it happened because it forced me to kind of, like, as I was, like, kind of, like, going through I was going through some other things at the time too, but that along with everything else kind of just like put me in a space that I wasn't really happy in. And it forced me to like expand my life outside of social media. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, I just, I got to a point where I was like, yeah, if followers come cool, if they don't, it doesn't matter. Like as long as I'm still doing like what I want to do. Um, and like now, and then like, as soon as I let go, it kind of like boosted back up again. So, yeah. Yeah. How do you, I mean, like I said, this question was uh, open to the, to the floor. Um, in regards to the effect that social media has had on your life in regards to, you know, you post a picture, you're getting a ton of likes and you know, you, you're feeling good. The endorphins are coming. You post another picture another day and it's not as many. How do you feel in that regard or just anything from, from social media in that aspect? <clears throat> um, I mean, I, well, I, actually, Amy, how old are you? 26. You okay, cool. So you're around. Um, so I feel like for us, we came up, in a time to where everything was like incredibly new as far as like social media went. So like growing up and seeing like Instagram become a thing and then Twitter and like Facebook and just seeing that stuff kind of like turned into the things that it is today. Um, I feel like it just showed a new way to like interact with people. And then in real time, you're seeing that um, 
like the likes and seeing how those things are affecting people. For me personally, um, I did kind of just want likes because like my friends was like getting likes and shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> I did, I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't care about it until yeah, I kind of saw other people like kind of like, oh yo, this doing numbers, and I'm like, yo, I'm getting like thirty <laughs> likes, bro. Like yeah. this shit is not slapping. Um, <laughs> not slapping. <laughs> like, like damn, what's going on with my pics? But it's like honestly, I feel like now the older we get. It's kind of reached a point of like, oh, well, it's going to do what it, what it do. Like, you know what I'm saying? You get into a self-confidence thing. You get into like a self-confidence thing. Like, you know what? Yeah. I think this looks good. So and I, feel I don't like care if you get. The, algorithm plays a huge part in regards to things like yeah, that as when well. When you start realizing stuff like that, it's really kind of like audio control. Yeah. It's not really much you can do as like a casual participator in any of this shit anyways. Mm. So it is what it is. Um, I think just so many people in our like generation itself were so affected by it or are still so affected by it is because that like system of gratification was pushed on us during like our most like developmental yeah. years yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. like where you want to fit in the most and you want to yeah. be seen as like somebody like incredibly popular now there's literally a gauge yeah. to tell you how yeah, popular you are yeah. that was like that's crazy and i feel like the more people now or like us i would say now i don't think we're too invested in it now um have reached a level of like i know who i am outside of this phone and this computer so it's like i know that if i get a hundred likes today or a thousand likes tomorrow it doesn't I, sun still go up, still go down. Like I still gotta yeah. go to work. Like you know what I mean. Yeah, it don't really affect me in that that way anymore. Yeah. Does social media like change your perspective on other people? Like when you like, if you're, I don't know, like meeting somebody new, is somebody's following like something that you guys like pay attention to? Um, I wouldn't say pay attention. Like, for example, like if I meet somebody and um, I get their Instagram and I follow, and I'm like, I may notice I'm like, oh, this person got like. 80,000 followers, like, oh, that's, that's dope. <laughs> Not Amy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the number that came to my head because yeah. you used it. But, yeah. but, like, oh, that's dope. And then it's like, I'll go check out the content that they created to to, to get there. Mm. But it, it doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily, like, sway my yeah. opinion on a person or anything like that. Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a stark difference between reality and the life that you can portray on Instagram, you know, obviously, or any, t any social media platform where it's like a highlight reel. But I do believe that social media, more specifically, Instagram can play a role in me getting to know someone better, mm. more specifically speaking out of a, a, towards like a romantic relationship. Um, it allows me to get some I'm just, hey, it I'm allows just, me to, I'm no, 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 I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Respectability me, politics. You only want women that's playing respectability politics. Come on, man. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I, it just gives me a little glimpse into your life and what you like to put out there. So you can take notes on the person before you go and, like, pursue them? You know, come on, man. You know. He said if she got her ass out, nah, no. I didn't I say all that. Me. I didn't no. say that. But, no, you know, I mean, said. you know, I like, to, I like to give people an opportunity um, because... You can be a great person, ultimately. Um, so I definitely want to give you an opportunity. And, you know, again, it doesn't matter if you have a following of 100 or 100,000. I just um, don't know if I agree with that standpoint. What do you mean? From the standpoint of, like, their Instagram or whatever. <coughs> I mean, because you, you control what you put out there. Yeah, no, I, no, mm -hmm. I understand. And that's what I'm saying. But, like, that plays a role. Like, so now what I'm saying from that perspective is it allows me to see your taste level. Sure. I, that's important to me. Okay. It's not extremely important, but it's of some importance to me. And it could not allow me to see that as well, obviously, but it allows me to see that. It allows me to see how you dress when you're, you know, when you're going out. It allows me to see the type of content you put out there for the most part. Um, because some people are just reckless and doesn't, doesn't necessarily care about what they put out there. And some people are conscientious about that. I know there are a ton of videos and photos <laughs> Act like a lady. <laughs> That's what he but, said. Oh um, no, 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 man! I'm it's just, I'm just kidding, bro. From my standpoint, I'm just saying, like, it's you can you can do all these things, and you can try to curate the perfect Instagram. Yeah, for sure. For, for people to be like, oh, well, this person looks like they have taste. I this still person look like they have class. Yeah, and it could be the complete opposite in real this life. This is yeah. this is very true. I can be catfished. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> um, I can be catfished from a romantic relation. Well, we can all be catfished from a rom romantic standpoint and a friendship standpoint as well. But uh, 
I still think it. I said a small percentage. You can okay. you can look at it from both perspectives. I like at least I think so because yeah, like what you put on Instagram is not reality. Like, and I can speak on that like straight up because that's I do it all the time. Like, I don't think anybody know. I don't think you know really know me unless you like really have a conversation with me. So like, I yeah. would say most every person who follows me like doesn't really know me. Yeah. Um. And so you definitely can't sit here and like perceive me the right way just mm -hmm. by looking at my Instagram. But I would say on the flip side for people who are like heavy Instagram users, like it is, I would say I could understand what Laz is saying in the sense that like, yeah, if you're careless putting anything out there and like you are acting crazy, like on Instagram and you're okay with putting yourself out there a certain type of way, or even if you're not acting crazy, like even if you're going out of your way to like make another part of you known, like something good about you known, then that's also can be like it can it can have a little bit of say on like your character as a person like i know if i'm perceiving somebody throw themselves out there on social media in a type of way that's like rubbing me the wrong way i'm gonna assume that they're probably not just like not that person in real life like mm -hmm. if they're doing something questionable or whatever i'm gonna be like i don't really know if i want to like get into this you know yeah you talked about you know knowing yourself and first uh, once again I, I know you outside of here i think we all do a little bit right um one of the things that you didn't touch on in your introduction is the fact that you are a former D1 UV track star. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let it be known. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Within that, you know, uh, the reason why we came here to talk today was, you know, um, respectability politics. I know that you and I have had a, a, a ton of conversations in regards to, you know, your experiences as an athlete, your experiences um, within this world. And, uh, if you if you don't mind, you know, touching on a few of those. What experiences? Um, I have so many experiences with, in life. You know, with 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 the men oh. that uh, I think one of the things that we talked about is like I remember a, a conversation that we had about now. I don't know if this directly ties into respectability um politics, but well, what are respectability politics? Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Capital, no, I, um, <laughs> capitalist. <laughs> no, I got a. Uh, I wrote it down. That's Morpheus over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Blue pill or the red pill. <laughs> but um, respectability politics. Um, when marginalized people abandon parts of their culture to assimilate in the dominant culture, so it can be something as simple as you see, um, a lot of people are dressing a certain type of way when they go to the gym that is only accessible to say like, I don't know, affluent people. And then people feel like, oh, I can't go to the gym. I can't dress like that. Or they'll spend all their money to get one of those fits just so they can go do this one thing. Or even if it's just, if we were to get like racial, um, people feeling like they can't play certain music around white people. Mm. Or feeling like you can't wear your do-rag when you go to this certain yeah. place. Yeah, you know, so you're taking it off so you can fit in or you can be seen a certain type of way. Straightening your hair, uh, not wearing dreads or you know cutting your dreads off. You feel like you got a corporate job. You feel like you got to look presentable. Shit like that. Is this that. all a part of? I mean, I feel like you know, I, I feel like now we're touching in the code switching as well a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I was if you're code switching, you're engaging in respectability politics because you're attempting to assimilate into the dominant culture mm -hmm. that's going on. So that can. It's also something. I mean, it, it's everywhere. It's not particularly just racial. It's like, it's gender. It's like sexuality and things like that. Like certain people that may be uh, part of the LGBTQ community. Um, if you're, say you're a man and, and you are gay and you have a more feminine presenting personality, I guess, and you mm -hmm. come around a lot of men and you tone that down to seem like you're not gay or to just fit in with all these people that are straight and talking normally you would be engaging in respectability politics. I would say, yeah, like a good way to kind of sum that up. Is like you kind of said it yourself, like watering yourself down, mm -hmm. like whatever it is. Like, would you mm -hmm. agree? Like watering yeah, yourself down? Sure. Okay. If you know you Pepsi, you walk into a room full of water. <laughs> so, Pepsi. <laughs> um, you know, but again, you know, like your experiences with that, if, you know, if you don't mind sharing. Well, I actually never would have thought, based off of your definition, I wouldn't have mm -hmm. thought to, like, bring it into, like, fitness like that because I would have just gone right to, like, social issues. 
Um, but it's interesting that you brought up like the gym clothes because when I started, like that was actually something people said all the time. Um, if we're going to go back to like my Instagram and stuff, like people used to hit me up all the time and was like, Oh, I love how like real you are. Like you don't got to have like a good fit on to like, you just show up to the gym wearing anything. And I love yeah. it. I love that. What the so hell? Like it's your hair looks all wild and mad crazy. I love that. <laughs> That's actually nuts. Whatever. We're going to work. We're going to look past that because I'm never looking crazy, but right. yeah, sometimes like, I don't know, like you don't got to like put your best fit on all the time just to get active and to be healthy like that, you mm. know, it doesn't matter. But I do remember a lot of people would like a lot of girls would hit me up and was like, thank you so much for like showing yourself like not in the like the most expensive, cute gym fit like all the time. Like it's so nice to be able to see like I sometimes don't go to the gym because like I don't have those things. Yeah. And I just was like, what? Like and then now if I look back, it's different because in the past I would for sure go to the gym looking like anything like I didn't care. I was you wearing a T-shirt to, to like whatever I had right washed. Yeah. And now I definitely am like. Okay, make sure your gym fit looks good. Like, but which is stupid. Now that I'm like, we're talking about it. Which. I mean, I don't necessarily believe that there's anything wrong with looking good. You know, I yeah. mean, you want to look good, play good. You feel good, play good. You play yeah. good. Yeah, like if it they pay it good. Come on, good. man, you gotta finish Thank that God. up. It's like, oh, yeah, it's oh, all man, good. Man. It's it's that moment when you like, <clears throat> do I want to feel good or do I want to just like fit into this? Yeah. this idea of yeah, what yeah. they see me as. Like, if it's Amy fit, I gotta look like this instead of just being like, oh, I like this fit. Yeah. I mean, overall, what have, what has your guys' experiences been in that regard of respectability um, politics? I mean, I don't know if I really. I mean, I'm pretty much laid back and everything. He's I do. drinking the Kool Aid. Nah, it's not even that. But it's just I'm wherever I go, I feel like I'm always 100 percent self. So I don't necessarily. I don't feel like I cold switch or change who I am to try to present myself to fit in a certain manner. It's just I'm naturally me wherever I go. So do you feel a pull to change ever? No. Like, Cause then I I I'm the type of person where I pride in like me being me whenever with mm. with whoever. So if I feel like if I have to change who I am or something about me, then I I'm not meant to be in that group. So for myself, um and just speaking on past experiences, I, f I, I feel like at one time when I started working at Catalyst um before then i i got in trouble for being me a lot and me at the core of me like i'm very i'm extremely playful you know just always trying to have like a laugh for the most part and uh at one point in time i guess i, I guess you can say that i didn't necessarily know when to turn that off like every time all the time was a good time and so um you know, I started looking at people in a different light um, than mine and saying that maybe I have to be more like them so that I can be where they are. Mm -hmm. And I changed. I didn't like it um, for myself personally because I wasn't necessarily being myself, obviously. And it didn't feel comfortable. And I was like that for years and I didn't really understand, you know, like, this is like early 20s and I'm trying to just figure myself out now um I show up as me everywhere I don't care where we are what we're talking about like I think uh and I think that's uh obviously I think that you guys would agree that's a, just a very powerful thing um to be able to just show up as yourself you know and uh you're gonna accept me for me and if you don't accept me for me then this isn't the place for me to be anyway you know, um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want the tone of my voice to change. I'm just thinking this out. I don't want the tone <laughs> of my voice to change. Um, yeah, I don't want to change how I dress. And I did, again, I did all of these things just so I can be in a certain place. But yeah. What made you feel like you had to like be accepted in those places? Was it because like you had to or like did you want to fit in? Again, it just goes back to the it's not necessarily fitting in. I just wanted to be successful. Mm. Um and I felt like I at at the time I had been fired from two positions 
um, I've been kicked out of two schools. And I just felt like maybe, maybe me isn't what I need to be. Mm. So maybe I need to be something other than myself. Looking back in hindsight, obviously you go into, you know, just the, just the idea of just simply being a, a more refined and mature version of yourself versus being someone other than yourself. And I wouldn't say that I completely changed, but there, you know, so watered down. Well, we can go with watered down. Um, but like my whole, and this ties into the relationship that I was in at the time and just, you know, things that I was going through, but like my whole style changed mm. and like, I wasn't dressing like how I was typically dressed. I bought a car that I probably wouldn't have bought. Mm. And, um, like it was just, again, I, I guess you can, I guess we could use that, uh, that phrase of being watered down. Um, because it was definitely watered down. It wasn't the last that you see now and today, it definitely wasn't that at that time. But we're here now, you know. But um, when I thought of respectability uh, politics, um, one of the things that I was thinking of in, in, in regards to, like, conversations that I've had with yourself, Amy, were your experiences with men. And, uh, you know, college football athletes or college basketball basketball athletes um thinking because they have a certain stature Mm -hmm. that they can do and do what and who they want um because of who they are um and yeah again that's that's what i thought about when i when i when i thought of respectability uh politics and the word female as well (laughs) okay Um, To speak on the first part, I would say my, when I was younger, okay, so you said some, there was a shift, like, when you were in a different relationship. After I had gotten out of, um, after I had gotten out of a relationship, I definitely was a little bit less confident, like, naturally. You just go through certain things, and it kind of puts you in a place where you're just, like, not as confident, and I think at that time, um, being I was very vulnerable to like the people around me so like or maybe sensitive or um like easily I don't want to use the word impressionable but like I definitely would take on what other people were saying and doing as more like I was confident in them more than I was myself and so to yeah to be around certain people especially men I think tend to just have a dominant like um I don't know like nature to them like especially over women um, to be in that position, like to be already in a position of feeling like less than just because I was going through what I was going through and then to be like kind of approached by certain people who already had a dominant attitude. Um, I was definitely like a little bit more timid. And if we're going to talk about like watering yourself down, all those things, I, it's so like, it's stupid to think about it. Like you water yourself down to be around people, like to be yeah. then accepted because like, if you, you said it yourself, like if you want if if I have to be less than myself in a space to be accepted, then that space shouldn't even be for me anyways. And so I guess I found myself during that time simply because I was like going through some things and like I was less confident that I would, yeah, like change my behavior or like kind of accommodate the room rather than like be loud and be myself. And I I could see for sure that like people would perceive me differently during that time. Like they would not even just perceive me differently, but then, then like treat me differently and like had like a little bit more, they almost had more confidence to themselves, like being able to try to like say or do whatever they wanted. And like, then who I am is at the core, like definitely does not stand for any of that. Like I'm a pretty confident person and I'm pretty outspoken. So like once I kind of like worked on myself, got my confidence back, like you can't tell me to do anything that I don't want to do. Like you can't say anything that's going to like kind of sway me. Like if, if the, if I was put in those situations that I was in during that time, th- like as the person I am now, like I wouldn't really be influenced by yeah. certain people. Um, but I think another thing too, in terms of if we want to bring it like in athletics and like fitness again, just because that's something that obviously I like relate to, I would say one thing that I know a lot like as a woman and always being in sports was having to be like, Le- like feeling like I had to be less strong to be perceived by men a certain type of way, like mm-hmm. physically. And I just, I remember so many instances like growing up and like 
I was so good at my sports, like, especially in high school. Like, I was people, like, on the loudspeaker in the morning. Like, my name was always on there. And so it was, like, such an encouraging thing. Like, I was always, like, being, like, praised for all of my accomplishments. And then socially, like, to be a strong, fit woman was, like, less accepted. Mm -hmm. And I remember there's been a lot of times, like, within my athletic career and then just, like, as a person that I feel like I have to – question like my physique like oh should I not look this type of way or should I make sure I'm not looking too strong here or, like looking too many muscles here like I think you look amazing thank you I me mean, personally you got that thing you got that thing you got that thing he does this all the time so Ooh, it's, that is a compliment yeah that is you. a compliment Honestly, a ter- endearment I'm showing her endearment you look like you got that thing it's crazy. <laughs> I didn't say you look like you got. She has that thing. I, it's not a look like you have that. Th- she has that he thing said on it. Questionable things. The camera on me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Um. No, but I definitely remember. Like, there's been so many times where I've been like in a completely unathletic setting, and like I've made I've been made a comment about my body. Like, guys will make comments about your body, whatever. Um. But like in terms of it being strong. Honestly, girls have done it too, which I find even more like that's like a form of. I mean, it's a human thing, though. What'd you say? I feel like it's a human thing. I, I don't. Know. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's. I think it's like girls kind of accommodating to the mindset that we have to look a type of way. Like, there's a very specific body figure that like girls like tend to be accepted to have, and so I think that's just like that's just being a hater if you're being a girl like coming at other girls for looking. I don't know, but. I I do remember that, like, growing up for sure, um, that was something that I felt like I had to, like, water myself down for, which is so sad because, like, my talent in life was, like, something physical. And, like, I was so good at my sports. And so, like, to then feel like, oh, well, if I want to be accepted socially, especially by, like, men, even females, like, I would have to be less strong. Like, that's just not, like, so something So how did you overcome that feeling? Um... I honestly, like, I don't really know if there was ever, like, one specific moment, but I do know that, like, watching other women embrace their, like, shoulders and, like, their arms and Mm -hmm. their backs and all that, I do know, like, seeing other people, like, praise themselves for gaining that, because that was something I, it's just, like, a structure that I had naturally, so, like, seeing other people kind of build it intentionally and then accept it and, like, embrace it on themselves, I was like, oh, like, I can look at myself in a good way now, like, I can like this, so... I mean, in all seriousness, I do think that you're uh, an attractive woman, but you. you also obviously come with a, a great mind as well and a great personality and great soul. Thank you, Laz. Y'all didn't know. <laughs> Very wholesome moment. Yeah. I mean, come on now. That was like pretty big for our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm WTTV. Remember this forever now. Writing it Reinforcing down. friendships. Right. Come on down to WTTV. <laughs> Bring your friends. Your yeah, man. Do you guys have any thoughts on that topic of conversation, or is that not like really something you guys think about? Hmm. <laughs> oh gosh. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's just it's interesting to hear that. I, I mean I've I've seen it firsthand, and you feeling and you feeling like um you had you were like almost persecuted for your physique, um the. The more I was looking into like uh, respectability politics, uh, one thing that kept kind of um, coming up was that men are almost um, like immune to it in the sense of like, hey, oh, um, it's 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 almost like um, men are not affected. Oh, she said, just keep. I'll just shut up. I'm just a dumb stupid. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like, um, so like a lot of respectability politics stuff, like we was talking about earlier, um, has to do with you not being the dominant like group. So you have to assimilate into that. And then like men are always kind of like the thing, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like they kind of like dictate the terms so they don't really experience a lot of things Mm -hmm. in regards to that. Well, at least just for like being men. So like, I would, I feel like I experience more things being um being black than i do anything else really 
Like, I mean. What do you mean by that? So, like, you know how I was saying earlier about, like, LGBTQ people. They are, they have to assimilate into white uh, heteronormative shit. You know, that's what they have to do. As a black man, I feel like if I had to assimilate, I would be into the dominant culture. It would be into white culture. You know what I'm saying? As a man, I I don't feel like I have to assimilate into anything. When you speak on that, I just feel like personally that um, are we, is black more accepted? Like in now, you today? now, of course. It's more yeah, now no, I mean, then, yeah, like, uh, now more than ever. But it's change, like, so. <laughs> like, I mean, you know what I mean by this. What what I'm what I'm saying is like, it's cool. Our culture is cool. I think. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have I, to, you know. I feel like that's uh, there. Like, I, that's again, a very black sentiment, though. What do you mean? That black is cool because everybody takes. But they don't never acknowledge. You know what I'm saying? We know where it comes from. When I, when I, if we, for example, um, just being at the Taste of Buffalo, um, mm-hmm. which is just a you know food festival here in Buffalo, um, being there and uh, seeing how people respond to our music, mm-hmm. they all stop, want to dance, and you know form a crowd you know, just for a few of our songs, but, you know, you play a song from a Caucasian artist and it's not necessarily, the, you're not necessarily going to get that same reaction every single time unless it's like, what's that one song? Uh, hello, my honey. Hello, my darling. Hello, my hometown. Oh, girl. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking more so like... More like, like <laughs> what are you talking about? That's ringing off in the streets right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, oh, something yeah. like that. I don't even know. I don't even know Love the words. <laughs> but, uh, what did you, you know, say? In the arms of an angel? Was that what you were just? Was that? Was that? Just, <laughs> I, think, I think. That's, that's no, that, no. For uh, seventeen, you can. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Is that a but, white theme song? Because I have not heard. That. You know the white. <laughs> it's been a long <laughs> time. Like, yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, you, you yeah, know. There you go. Like, yeah, you know. Wait, hey there, Delilah. What is it? Hey there, Delilah. Blah, 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 blah. Or, or, like, or like, uh, I mean, I think this is a universally accepted song. Uh, making my way downtown. Oh, yeah. Walking okay. fast. Mm-hmm. You know. But, you know, things like that. Like you started off with the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just think about, you know, like owning a gym and like how one of my friends that came into my space and I brought him into the massage room. And I was like, what do you think? And he was like, this is nice. You see a few, he's seen a few photos. I have a few uh, portraits up of like Lil Wayne. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, my cousin and stuff like that. And then he said to me, you should have something in here that uh, white people can, you know, recognize and accept. And I was like, why? You know, I don't necessarily get that when I go to someone else's establishment. I don't, if I, let's say I go to an Asian establishment, they're not putting something up to um, cater to my needs. Mm -hmm. They're not playing music to cater to me and my needs. So why here in my place of business, do I necessarily have to cater the music that I play or the photos that I hang up about, about my culture to any other culture? No, it's not happening. You're going to get this. And that's that. I, I still don't think that that like changes that black culture being. Oh well, but cool. but what, what I'm saying is, in regards to that, like they, most of the people that come in, I mean, again, you're gonna go to a place, and if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, you're gonna move along. And um, again, I just think that let's say let's say for instance, Afrobeat. Like I can play that in the gym all day, and it's just like it's neutral. And it seems like everyone just loves it versus if I'm playing like, I don't know, got a drop on this flex, some King Von or something like that. Like that's not always going to be as easily palatable for everybody. Um, but it's still, you know, I, I still think that we're accepted a I lot would, more. I would say Afrobeat is black culture though. 
That's African culture. It's African culture, but yeah, I still, I, I mean, black. But it's like when we t- when we say black culture, that's African American. Black American. It's, it's African American. Black American. I mean, I don't know what difference you're trying to <laughs> create here, but it's like anything that was uh, a lot of black culture that's seen as popular was created by African Americans or Black Americans. Say, thank you. I feel like you guys are talking about separate things, though. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm I think to you're talk, like, I think I'm you're saying about. like about people, like white people, not wanting to assimilate themselves in black culture, and you're saying I don't give a, whatever, and a you're li- saying the opposite, like white people taking black culture, or at least that's yes. what it sounded like you were saying. Yes. Okay. And it's not just so, but we were talking about it being cool, though. I think it's more accepted, like you know, even in the NFL sense. Um and or in the NBA, I mean, most of the players are are people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but when you go there and you listen to the music that they play, mostly it's ours. And I just feel like once again, it's a little bit more acceptable than it was, let's say, twenty years ago. Even though the music is possibly worse in some scenarios. But you can't not go into a locker room and like, or like you hear on TV, um, you know they go to a they go to a commercial break from an NBA game and you hear the latest hip hop song playing, the most trendiest one from TikTok or something playing, mm-hmm. for sure. Again, I just feel like it's a little bit more accepted. Okay, fair enough. I don't think it, they think it's cool though. Like I feel like that's just like a. You kind of have to do that, though. Like, it's become one of the most, uh, well, at least in regards to, like, hip-hop, it's become yeah. one of the most popular genres to and ever profitable. exist and profitable as hell. It's there. That's that's what I was looking for, profitable. You would be stupid to not, you know what I mean, to not at least push it forward in, in that regard. And I'm I mean, talking it's like it can be seen as as a form of, like, acceptance, but I still feel like it's yeah. not scene everything genuinely everything comes back to capitalism everything comes oh, back to I'm fucking here. capitalism like that's what the, capital, good hustle good hustle good hustle i'm there you know? yeah but that's that's what i feel like and to, to kind of like what i was saying before it's like um i feel like a lot of black culture and a lot of stuff that we do is seen and then like taken somewhere else or like other people just do it and then they'll be like this is just me this is just how i how i get down like you know what i'm saying like people just trying to make it seem like they didn't get this from anywhere else. I think if it was cool, like if people genuinely thought this is cool as shit, people would be like, yo, I got this from there. Because why would I not? I think this is cool. as I think everybody should think this is cool. Or everybody should at least see it, you know? But if people are just, I'm going to take this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, assimilate that into myself and try to make it seem like this is still a me thing or this is still like a, this is still like a white thing or Asian thing, then do it really matter? Is it really cool then to them? That's why I said it's a black sentiment. Like, I feel like we we know we the shit because we see it. I see it in the way people dress. I see it in the way people talk. They want this yeah. trip. <laughs> yeah. Also, fuck capitalism. <laughs> it's my daily fuck capitalism. <laughs> Fair enough. The people rest. Yeah. I was gonna say I had a topic. I was. I'm. You you agreeing? Yeah. Okay. The people rest. The people rest. This case, but um, again, Amy, going back to the topic at hand, I was mostly talking about your sexual experiences. If you didn't mind sharing those. My sexual experience. <laughs> <laughs> not not in the bad. That's that came out so wrong. Hold that's on. A, we're about to edit that one out. That's like very heavy topic back to back. <laughs> no, but I'm that's talking a, about a like. Quick left turn. No, <laughs> no, no. You said not no, out the way. No. Sex. <laughs> Amy, you having it? <laughs> I didn't mean what, that when, the way where? it sounded. <laughs> but um, I was more so speaking to, you know, 
Nah, man. It's not. It's not. I just want to know. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You, uh, what you doing with that nah. thing that you had? <laughs> that is not what I meant hey. whatsoever. All right, let's, um, let's but I was just talking to about. Himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was more so talking about those experiences that we have had personal conversations. Of. Oh, oh no, I'm <laughs> like, gosh. you just trying to like, bring okay. us in your sexual Yo. deviancy. <laughs> like I'm talking about the experience that we have had sexually, you know, <laughs> not the other ones. It sounds no, terrible. It sounds way thing. terrible. You want to clean this up here? That's what I'm saying. Well, you know what I'm yeah. talking about. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, you I know really what I'm wanted about. you to struggle to get it. I don't know. What are we talking about here? <laughs> Amy, can you please save me? Because they just like they just go on. With you this. want to, to ask about R. my sexual experiences that I've had where I feel like I have less power in it. Right? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Hey, thank you. Thank you, Amy. As a woman. Yes, as a woman. Yes. Thank um, you. Yeah, they was, they was about to cancel you. Right? <laughs> That's why I started sweating profusely. <laughs> profusely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, like, experience certain things. Like, it doesn't have to be necessarily, like, the most extreme form of, I don't know, like anything that you can go through sexually that's uncomfortable. It doesn't have to be the most extreme thing to experience something like uncomfortable. I think a lot of people, both men and women, probably experience things in their own way. But um, I would say like as a woman, like I definitely have been, I definitely have been put in situations or at least like expected to be in situations where like, oh, you hang out with me, you think you can get it. And yeah. like, I just, I don't like that. Like I've never liked that. And um, it makes me like, I, I feel sometimes like nervous to like hang out with a man or whatever because what's gonna happen? Like what are you expecting from me? Like are you gonna are you even now in conversation saying the right things and doing the right things because you have some goal in mind, like that if you check all these boxes, like when you come over, something's gonna happen, whatever. Um and um I don't necessarily like experience a whole lot of that now just because I'm not ever putting myself in that situation but I definitely know in the past like yeah like I've been in situations where I feel like I've almost been I don't definitely don't want to use the word force but like maybe like enticed to do something with some like people coerced me. forced yeah coercion for sure um and as like it makes me honestly feel like I can be less of my woman self and I don't even mean that in like a bad way like I want to embrace my womanhood as much as I can and like to be as as feminine as I can be but I think a lot of times like to protect myself and to feel safe like by myself I have to like put on this like more masculine role and then I feel like that kind of like disconnects me from being able to like connect with men because or whoever it doesn't have to be even men like just connect with people because I have a less gentle approach because I have to make sure that like I'm good Mm -hmm. And I've definitely been put in a lot of situations like where, yeah, like I've been like sexualized and like people think that they can just do whatever, or, like try to do whatever. And it's not like it's it, I know other women have been through it, too. And it's just like obviously not fair. Like you don't want to go through that. So. I mean, I look, I look at that as like a survival tactic, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you have to it sucks that you have to do what you have to do but you have to do uh what it is that you have to do mm. and uh you know i know sojourner typically he um he's like <laughs> holy a shit he's like a <laughs> excuse me <laughs> he's a what he's a super predator um <laughs> <laughs> that, that's yeah, that's a scarlet letter if i ever seen up. one that's so crazy i've never he said now that we're talking about Another coercion, left turn. sojourner how would you like to <laughs> <laughs> Tell us some of your tactics. That is crazy. Tactics is crazy. <laughs> tactics is nuts. You know, he says uh, it's nothing to take women out on dates because that's typically how he gets them to do. You remember what you tell tell the people? No, these people already know <laughs> from past episodes. I don't even like dates. So what are you talking about? Are you making up false narratives? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We ain't never making it. God is good. All right. God oh, is, God is stop good. The God, how about that's crazy? God is, my back's against the wall. Oh, Lord, you know goodness. I love you. God is great, ain't he? God damn. But, um, yeah, I'm not a sexual predator or any type of predator for that standpoint. Sure. Whatever you say. All right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> overall, 
um, you know, you've obviously uh, overcame a lot just to be in a position that you are in today. Um, and again, I have to ask, how does that feel to be there? And how does it, how do you feel today? Um, that was all on the sex stuff. Just yeah, are we talking about? I was just you know, uh, exposed or trying. You're not even gonna check. What about what about you? What about your stories? You have any stories? I don't have any stories in that regard. You you never felt like you were coerced. Yeah. Do you guys feel coerced? Yes. Actually, mm. you like a piece of meat. Facts. Yes. They take what they want and yeah. just throw them to the side. Yes. I think there is a double standard in that. Like I'm not yes, even gonna yes, sit here is. and pretend and like there's not. They, they look at it like niggas should always want to. Yes. Yeah. And like, yes. Actually, 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 actually I would say you're a man. It's yes. Like, why wouldn't you want to always have sex with me? You understand what I'm saying, Matt? You, I, we, we're on now the same he, page. Now he's ready to yeah, talk. Now, 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 now he's in corner. That's why like, I, I, I had to bring that back real quick because I was like, now why I you just ask about her sexual stuff? No, nah, because, you know, I, again, I, I've had that experience, and I'm, you, you guys know, Sojourner and Matthew, where, you know, because you're a woman and because. I hear my name now. He's not, he's not, he's not super predator, but, um, <laughs> um, I've had that experience where I, uh, a woman that had, ex- had expressed interest in myself and, um, just automatically expect, expected because she did so that I was going to sleep with her, but I'm not attracted to you and I don't want to sleep with you. Mm. I'm sorry. So after that I became gay. <laughs> that sounds so wrong. That shit is that crazy. Yo. Like I knew exactly what you meant, I but didn't. you said it like you came out. Like, <laughs> like, <you> said, <laughs> yo, like because she forced that on I me, I am all kinds of L's. All kinds of L's today, she but no, you gay she called after, me gay. After the fact, oh, because I you literally denied, did. because you yeah. denied her advances. She said, "There's no way." This that guy wouldn't want to sleep with me, so he, he must be, be gay. I literally did not think that, that at all. I was like, okay. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. <laughs> like, like, period. Nothing's going to be wrong with that, but no. <laughs> no. But yeah, no, um, automatically after that, yeah, I became, um, in her mind, I was gay because, yeah. you know, whatever. But that all that brings me back to the, to the idea, and I think this is something that I always say, and I think it's something I said uh, here in this episode today, that it's not just male specific or female specific or um a certain race or race specific or anything like that it's a human thing every single time Mm. in any matter in any subject it's always a human thing you can't just say he's he's like that because Mm -hmm. he's a man no it's it's human it's human nature yeah i know because he's last right essentially all right, we can go with that. Destroyed his whole <laughs> See, because too. they is not like me. So first off, but no, that is. Um, I do think that that like you were saying, that is a double standard that uh we experience. I've also been in situations where it's like, if I've had sex with a woman before, she then now feels like she is entitled to all of my time if she wants to have sex with me at yeah. any given point in, 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 in anything. That's interesting because that's like almost different, like. A girl feels like now she's entitled to your time. Like, now you guys should be, like, chilling like that yeah, all the time. All the time. I feel like on the girl side, like, oh, we had sex once. Like, oh, you think you can get it whenever? Like, <laughs> you can circle back anytime. Mm. Like, what if, no. Like, I don't, you know. Mm. But it's different because obviously, like, like, I mean, what men and women are different. So now mm. you guys, the perspective you have is, like, she wants to hang out with you all the time. <laughs> I, I feel like I am not above, like, romance. You know, mm. like Sojourner said, he said he doesn't want to feel like a piece of meat. He I wants his flowers. Like to not, you know what I'm saying? He wants some flowers. That would be cool. Something. Would you, would you, know you guys like we to get go. flowers? I've actually yeah. received flowers. I've, I received flowers. And I felt like a baddie. Uh, yeah, for real. And yeah. you should? I yeah. received flowers. I thought that was dope. I thought that was cool. I had never really received flowers before. So yeah. I was like, oh, this is a nice gesture. Yeah, they say most men don't receive their flowers until, until, they, until they, I swear to God, you steal my fucking shit. I'm like, oh, you. <laughs> nah, man, you already stole it. Go ahead now. Just, yeah. just finish oh, it off. Man. Just finish it off, man. You know. You know. They say most men don't receive their flowers until they're on their deathbed. So, dang. Oh, that was supposed to be my dang. That was supposed to be my relatable moment. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Nah. But but I do think some tasteful gestures would be nice. Don't just call me at fucking one o'clock in the morning. Drop that dick off. And also, I'm old now too, so don't call me at one a.m. It needs to be more. Why like are we calling at one a.m.? I should have said. I'm old now, so. 
if you're gonna make yeah, it, at least make sleep. it at like respectable nice. hours. So, yeah, like let me at least get some right. sleep on the next day. I'm about to be thirty. Can we set up some appointments? I'm about to make an app. I'm about to make an app. What's going to be the link? <sighs> Eggplants and peaches. Was it? Was that I'm was? sorry. Peaches and eggplants. Yeah, we'll go with <laughs> yeah, that. Let's do that. That's going to be the only song I play the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, like, if I'm going to speak on speak for men, like one place that I see that you guys kind of get like I don't know treated differently than women is like in the club. Like, as if I was a girl wanting to walk around acting like I could t- like literally touch any guy I wanted to, like I don't do that. But I know I've seen my friends as men like been kind of embrace that way where like they can just go and be touched like girls just think that they can just like do whatever they want like oh rub on you blah 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 and like god forbid somebody touches me like no you're yeah. i'm about to snap yeah. like girls but like walked up and grabbed my dick before when i was in a relationship Which is crazy crazy but I, I didn't want it though so oh. i was like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? like i'm okay but with these sexual it's it's just slut yeah, I remember, right. like, when I was in a relationship, my um, I went to the bathroom. My ex was waiting outside the bathroom for me, and I walked out, and some girl literally just went up and, like, straight just cupped him. And I was like, what? And he literally was like, wait, what? And I was like, she just thought she could. He was just sitting yeah. up against the wall and, like, whatever. I'm like, yeah. like, if a guy ever, like, even when a guy, like, guys do, like, try to touch my butt when I'm walking around out, and, like, you're going to instantly hear it. Like, no, what the fuck you're doing? Like, mm-hmm. what? But like guys, I feel like girls just think guys want it, so like yeah. they can just do it. Definitely, clubs a nasty place. Very yeah, nasty no. Place. I think overall, obviously, you know, we go back to the idea of this just being a human thing. Yeah. You know? And um, we need to just have respect all around. And overall, I think that's the biggest yeah, thing. Respect. That's the word. Show me some respect. You need to just have respect over uh, you know, um, <laughs> and, and that's just it, you know. But yeah, man, I rest my case. Does that make you guys feel a type of way? Like, does it like <laughs> would that like I don't know hurt your feelings? <laughs> like, I don't necessarily I don't hurt. It feelings. don't hurt my feelings per se. Um, no. Again, I just like some respect. Again, you know? yeah, yeah. Don't just whenever because we had sex before. Don't just be like, oh well. I can I can if do whatever I, was, I want now. If I was friends with a girl prior to us having sex, and then it just devolves into like a let's just have sex kind of thing, that kind of hurts my feelings, or at least makes me feel like a little bit like offended. Like we was cool before this. Yeah. Like we we was friends, like legitimately friends. Like yeah. What happened? To that? Yeah. Can't even laugh anymore. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> now you just come over. You don't, you don't even want to sit on the couch. It's like yeah. the bed. bed want to sit on something else. <laughs> That's, That's a tough thing. <laughs> Whatever happened yeah. to you last? What do you mean? Um, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been used like a piece of meat last? I have I have definitely. Uh, okay. You just do a system reboot over there? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, I believe I have once, but I think that was kind of like a mutual thing. Um, you use her too? Yeah, we use yeah. one another. That yeah. We'll go with that. We use one another for sure. Yeah, um, always go up an octave. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, nah, I mean, we definitely used one another in that regard. Um, it was, so it was a mutual using um but otherwise no i don't I, I haven't had an experience myself where i'm just like called over necessarily for that unless this is like my partner in which i've been in a very long relationship so you know that i wouldn't think of that as me just like being used it's just mm-hmm. like you know it's it's that time <laughs> so uh i've definitely been used there and i like that yes you yeah. are you yeah i would yeah 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 you're definitely a smut I'm not a smut, but I'm just saying, it's like, you know, you've been used before, like this one time, I won't, you know, go too in detail, but, like, this girl, she was coming from school, and then she was just, hit me, was like, hey, I got, like, 45 minutes in between my classes. Wow, yeah, no. I need to to come over and you handle this, I'll bring you some Chipotle. The Tyson part with the Chipotle. Chipotle. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, I mean, I really don't want to, but I don't have to go anywhere for food, so, I mean, I guess. Oh God! Yeah, if it, if it wasn't no Chipotle involved, I would have probably said no. To be honest, 
Yeah, and then when she got there, she brought the Chipotle. I thought I was going to get a chance to eat first. Like, I went to open the bowl, and then I looked up, and then oh, she Oh, just, you ate first, all right. She was naked. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I put this off to the side for now. I know yeah. from uh, previous conversations that Amy and I have had that she constantly has used men in the past um, wow. to get... She's <laughs> making everyone into breasts. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What about you? Like, I mean, damn. Yeah, I'm a saint. Last? I'm Let's, a saint. You're what? I'm a saint. That's you said that a little quiet, like almost like you didn't believe it. I'm a saint. Okay. No, he don't believe it. He didn't believe he it. Don't believe he it. doesn't. He, he knows. Last know what he'd be doing to these girls. Right. I'm lazing them up. I know. Oh. I know, Laz. I haven't done anything to anyone. Um, I treat me, all, me, I tr- me and Laz were supposed to be the seller bros. That's what we are. He's, for for those that don't know, seller bros, celibacy bros. Yes. Together we I am celibate. Yes, well, I am true. celibate. Staining I am celibate. From sex. I am celibate. I just went through this yesterday with the uh, with celibate. I'm celibate. I don't know. I always get mixed up. But anyways, he is a liar. I am celibate. He is a cheat. (laughs) I have been hoodwinked. You bamboozled. You have proof. Let us stray. Run run amok. Like all of these things. Oh, we celebros. I'm celibate. All right. I am celibate, and that's he's hoeing solo. Like I said, I'm like I said, I'm solid. But uh, I didn't even I didn't even do that on purpose. Yeah, that's good. The talent. Anyway, like I said, me personally, um, today I rest my case, and uh, you know, I don't think it was a case for you to rest. There was no case. Bad moments today. I I took a lot of L's today. I took. I'm I'm acknowledging my L's today. I took a lot of L's. Need to start defending. No, it's fine. I rest my case. I rest my case. Um, but yeah, nah, um. Now you go ahead. You do your thing, man. It's a word of the day. Yeah, it is a word of the day. But before we do word of the day, I did kind of want to do the um, the strawberries and lemons thing. Oh, gosh. We haven't done that in a while. That's, that's, and, you know. Okay, so strawberries and lemons. It's like peaches and cream. So, <laughs> you need a nah, really. yeah, go there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we go around the room. We say our strawberries and lemons. Strawberries are something good that's happened to you. Today or yesterday, recently, and then a lemon is obviously something sour you didn't like happen. Okay. Last start us off. <sighs> uh, today something good that happened. I mean, I got to see you guys and sit down with the Amy Fit, um, which has you know been a pleasure. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, in regards <laughs> to a lemon. Uh, the reason why I keep saying rest my case is because I've been sitting in court all week, all day for about eight hours a day. Um, watching, yeah. Um, watching, uh, the trial of the person who murdered my friend. So that's been, you know, it's a bit of a, a bittersweet moment. Um, but, uh, the case is looking good overall in regards to him, you know, obviously just being in prison. Um, but you know, still a bit of a somber moment. I hate for you to go next, but uh, <laughs> <Amy. sober>. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Um, strawberries, you know, just enjoying life as it comes. You're um, here, that's 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 the biggest yeah, strawberry. You know, that's the strawberry. You've seen yeah. another year of life. I did big 30 now. Um, uh, and again, just enjoying life as it comes. Trying not to harp on too much things. Um, lemon. You're 30 now. Yeah, I'm 30 now. <laughs> lemon. I was telling last yesterday, my knees ache. Damn. Back hurts. Yo, I bought some uh, joint vitamin off mm. my HSA card. <laughs> We're going to fix that right up. I'm getting scared. Like, I'm 26, guys. Can we just... No, it's okay. My knees and stuff. Oh, probably you're you're eighty fit. You're yeah, incredible. you're way, probably for way more movement. healthier than us. You I'm know not gonna I'm experience saying. the thirty issues until I'm like forty. Is that what we're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Probably mine's, fifty. Oh, honestly, word. mine's from like lack of movement and stuff. You know, <laughs> not as active as I should be, okay. as we can see. It's all right. Next year, cookout. Me and Jerner, we gods. <laughs> After the last three cookouts. Hey, listen, <laughs> what, it's gonna stick. <laughs> Fourth time's a charm. Well, uh, Amy. Um. <clears throat> Strawberries, I guess I would say after a year and a half of me planning my own podcast, mm-hmm. um, I finally started it. Yeah. So we finally did that. I'm really excited about it. Um, I started like three weeks ago. 
and then had my first interview, like, that I recorded um, last week. So, yeah, it's been a long time. Like, I've been, like, kind of, like, manifesting and planning this for a long time. So finally getting it going. Like, I had, like, some moments of, like, oh, my God, am I going to actually do this, or is this just an idea? Like, it was really satisfying to actually do it. So That's a strawberry. Um, it's actually hard for me to think of a lemon. Which I guess is a good thing. That's yeah, a good thing. That's a great thing. Yeah. I would say like a lemon, which is not really a lemon, but I've had to take like a break on like traveling right now. Yeah. Um, that's another one of my biggest like passions, I guess. I love to travel. Um, but just with when you focus on one part of your life, like you kind of got to like sacrifice other parts. So kind of been in the house. Um, haven't really been able to like expand outside of Buffalo a whole lot. But um, yeah. I don't really have a whole lot of, like, lemons in my life right now, which I guess is a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, my strawberry is um, I didn't go to work today. I uh, had a time last night. Really enjoyed myself. Got some good sleep. Had lovely dreams. Felt really good when I woke up. Um, sure you're celibate? Oh, see, it wasn't even like that. Yeah. I... Very wholesome moments. You ever fly in a dream? That shit is fire. Most of my dreams are pretty bad, so I don't know. Okay. All right. But it's okay. No, you know, I've been, I'm I've been like, wanting to not dream, you. actually. You Thank you. Yeah. Huh? I've been wanting to not dream, actually. Have you been having bad Why? dreams, too? You no, know, I've just been dreaming constantly, and I think it's simply because my body is just active because I keep eating before I go to bed, <laughs> and so I just keep are we dreaming. Not supposed to dream? I don't want to. Like, I just want to rest peace. Like, I really want to just rest, but if you're constantly dreaming like that, your body, you're active. Like, I'm conscious of that when I wake up, that I was in a dream. Yeah, my dreams, like, I feel like I'm watching a movie the whole time. Like, I'm constantly stimulated. I'm just trying to be dead to the world. Okay. My not dreams, literally, but, my like. My dreams be lit. I don't know about y'all. I be doing shit. My I'm not trying to dream every single day. Yeah, there <laughs> like, you go. That should be lit. Like, I'm not trying to dream every single day, but I, okay. I digress. Uh, Lemon is, uh, I got to take a defensive driving course to get my license back. That's like five hours after a day. Yeah. I'm going to just do it when I work from home. I don't two birds, one stone. Oh, there you go. So, I guess uh, it's like a strawberry lemon. Yeah. Because like, a lemon to get to the that. strawberry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, uh, so, yeah, so there's that. How about you and your DUI? I'm not talking DUI. about DUI. See, these narratives seem to be crazy. That's what I'm saying. I don't have a DUI. I can go to Canada if I want to. Oh, well, that's a shout out to somebody. Yeah, if you get a DUI, you can't go to Canada for like eight years or something. For real? Yeah. I didn't even know that. they have a zero tolerance policy, so. Yeah, the more you know. Uh, speaking of the more you know, the word of the day. Is uh, <clears throat> honestly, I don't really know how to pronounce Jesus this one. Christ, bro. <laughs> how do you pick a word <laughs> that you, you don't know how to pronounce? Okay, wait, 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 man. I gotta see if it'll play. Let's see, duende, D U E N D. That sounds like something in the body. Du- duodenum, duodenum. Yeah. yeah, whatever it is, you know what it is. <laughs> okay, so there, uh, there's two definitions. There is the power to attract through personal magnetism and charm and a quality of passion and inspiration. Duende. Can you use it in a sentence? Use it in a sentence. Uh, uh, is it a noun? Adjective? Yes. Right. It's a noun. It's a noun. Uh, so the duende behind my healthier lifestyle is inspired by Amy Fit. <laughs> I can't really snap on this end. I'm oh, not in my snapshots. And my snapshots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. right, this is fun. I enjoyed this one. Because he's bit very punny today. Yeah, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm having kids with all these dad jokes. Well, um, before we go, I hope not. Uh, I just <laughs> wanted to say thank you, Amy, for. Uh, yeah, thank uh, you, Amy, for coming through. Thank Great you time. guys for having me. I mean, even though you don't have to, you want to plug your toe shows, your new podcast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wait, what I'm saying it? Is that yeah. what I'm mm-hmm. oh. say it right there? Um it's called Dear Athletes. That's Should I give like a little rundown of what it yeah, is? Yeah, little, little, give a little oh, synopsis. Welcome. Okay, I'll put you guys on, okay? Mm-hmm. Um it's basically a podcast to help athletes kind of like speak their truth. And so um I know so the reason why I started it was because ending my career as a track and field athlete um was really, really hard. And finding my identity after sports was like probably one of the most unexpectedly hard journeys I had been on. I'm still honestly on it. 
Um, and I had gone through like a really hard time at that while going through that transition. And so I was just thinking a lot about my like feelings, my emotions, like are other people around me feeling the same thing? Is it just me? Like all that. And so I started talking to my friends, started talking to just anybody. Um, and I realized that it was a conversation that a lot of people needed to have, but haven't had. And so then I started thinking like, okay, if this is just one piece of being an athlete that needs to be talked about that isn't, like what else is there? And so I had realized that a lot of the reasons why I was feeling this type of way was because of some other traumas that happened as an athlete while I was actually competing. And so then that just kept bringing me to different topics and different possibilities of emotions and experiences that athletes have gone through. And um, I know that there are a lot of things that athletes experience within their career and outside of their career that needs to be talked about because there's really not a huge space, especially athletes have a very like, there's like a standard that we are just tough and like, you just got to get through whatever. You don't have time to worry about your problems. You don't got time to like really like talk about those things. And if you do, you're weak. Um, but I think that there's like a better standard to live by and it's just to like be open and honest about it and to like use each other as a community and like, instead of always competing against each other, kind of use this space for us to like, kind of like come together and find okay. a common ground okay. and, and kind of work through those traumas so that when we step outside <clears throat> of this space, we're able to experience life in its fullest. So we're not always drawn down by like those experiences. So there's a lot of experiences that people go through. It's whether it's um, coaches kind of taking your, you away from your passion, um, injuries constantly taking you away from being able to perform your sport, uh, feeling like you were stripped of an opportunity, um, identity, like whatever it is, there's so many things. Um, and I just want to have an opportunity <coughs> and a space for people to be able to share that experience with everybody and like talk on it. So basically if you're an athlete and you wanted to like have a story to share, you would be able to just like hit me up and we'd work out a time for us to communicate about or set up a time to like have, like sit down and have a talk, really casual talk, just like going through our experiences. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that we all basically can benefit from each other. Not only like, talking about your stuff can help, but if somebody else isn't comfortable or at least doesn't have the words to be able to talk about their stuff, they can um, hear somebody else's words and maybe like cope through their stuff through that. So For sure. check it out. Okay. It's called Dear Athletes. Is it just you on the podcast? Or is it yeah, like I'm the main host. Like I'm the only or like the <coughs> cons only consistent person that's going to be on it. But anybody can like I always want guests. And at some point I know it's probably going to expand. I'll have more than one guest. For now, it's just one guest at a time. But my goal is to obviously make it grow maybe even like get a sp like a space like this and like have a conversation with more than just one other person for sure so sounds good their athletes are a very fitting name for that too mm -hmm. so. i like that yeah thank you i actually took a long time it didn't come until like later that i came up with that name and it just kind of came to me and i was like i wanted to give it a little spin on like a journal entry yeah it's like you're mm -hmm. telling your story you also want other people to tell theirs yeah i don't even nice. remember Cute how little setup. our name not that you need to, but where do we follow you at? Huh? Where do we follow you at? What do you mean? Like, where can you find <laughs> social, it? Your social media. Where do we follow you at? Mm, you can go underscore Amy underscore fit. And then if you want to find my podcast, so you just look up Dear Athletes. It's linked on my Instagram, too. Okay. 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 Right. So it'll be in her bio on her Instagram. Yeah. Like, share, comment, subscribe. As always. Subscribe. Mm hmm Y'all going to plug us? Of course, you know. Um, what's that YouTube? What they talking about podcast? Oh, Our YouTube is what they talking about podcast. Instagram, TikTok is WTTB Productions, and Twitter is WTTB Pod. There it is. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Definitely share and subscribe. And you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate it. There that. it is. Success. Mm -hmm.